Hello there, every pony, and welcome to the 20th episode of the Brony Book Club. Hey. I think in drug, induc yeah, inductions, ah, induc <laughs> introductions are in order, uh, since there's so many of it this time. So, I am, as always, Roy, the host, and with me is my co-host. Sam, that's me. That is him. Then also behind door number one, we have, from episode three, it's Pa Fiera. Hello, hello. What did you, what did you do? Why, why are you on here? I don't know. That, I was going to ask you that. He's on here so that I can bug him for new episodes. Or entries or chapters. That's oh. what they want. Chapter. What, yeah. entries? Does he do Marble Hornet? <laughs> yes. Kidding. Yeah, that, that thing where I... Right, yeah. yeah so oh, look over there! We'll need for more Chrono Trigger. Yeah, so if you couldn't tell by our joking, Pav is the author of My Little Chrono. And then, from episode 11, I believe, we have... Kavonde. Hey, everybody. He is the author of what I call the Blue Blood Trilogy, because it's easier than just going, well, there's a teacher of no class, and then the sequel, Strange Destiny of Prince Blue Blood, <laughs> and then there's the Prince of Ponyville, which is almost done. Yeah. Yep. For better or worse, it is. <laughs> and then we have Corey Williams from episode 13. Hello. <laughs> Not, uh, he... He, if you could not tell, is the author of the Vinyl Scratch Tapes, which makes him probably the most well-known guy here. Mm, truly, truly. I don't, yeah. I, I don't, I don't know, a lot of people like the Blue Blood Trilogy, and I, I like Chrono Trigger. I'm just going to talk about Chrono Trigger the whole time, but okay. <laughs> oh, oh here we okay. go. Frog is best character. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Frog's I, I pretty really, good. I, I think Luke is best character. <laughs> Luke is cool. Okay, so with the special <laughs> focus. All right, honestly, so let's start, before we start the whole point of this episode, let's quickly do, because there's not going to be much to talk about, uh, updates. There were not a lot of updates, despite it being two weeks. That's spring. I think everyone's in Cancun. That's true. <laughs> so, let's see. Uh, My Little Changeling by Niaruzu updated, which was easily my favorite chapter so far. Loving where this one's going. Really enjoying that one. Uh, a thick I had just finished reading, and then it updated, which is a pony walk. Uh, pony walks into a bar by Bronius Maximus. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a pretty, it's a pretty good. Uh, I guess slice of lifeish comedy kind of story about the pony uh, who's the barkeep for Ponyville's only bar, and just the, his stories of running into the the times he's run into the main six. And so each each character has their own chapter. And the newest one was Pinkie Pie's. Sadly, it was funny, but it, it's probably my least favorite of all of them so far, sadly. But it's overall really good when I do recommend it. It has a great sense of humor. And the characters are usually pretty original flavor. <laughs> uh, Fluttershy may be a little... Uh, Fluttershy storyline is amazing. Uh, and then right before this episode started to record, I come home to find, oh, guess what? Two, uh, two different fix updated. I only had time to read one of them. I read up on the update for What's in a Name by Key Tapper. Oh. Which, oh, Snapple! Going in a different direction, um, which is always awesome. Okay, not always. <laughs> and the other one which I haven't had a chance to read yet is Only Human, a, Ly a Lyra Heartstrings production. The one where Lyra's a cartoonist. And mm. yeah, there's, a new, there's finally a new chapter, and I still haven't read it. Anyone know, Anyone have anything they would like to talk about update-wise? Uh, uh, let's, let's see. What, what would we say, like, two weeks or something like that? Um, yeah. Life and Times of the Winning Pony. That yeah. updated, like, a week ago or so. That's about all I've got, too, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> non, I, 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 I say non-spoiler terms, what, what happened in this update? <laughs> no. Without spoiler? <laughs> how, do you, how do you do that? You can't even describe, like, where the plot has gone at this point without spoiling it. I mean, the way it started and where it is now, it's just completely different. Okay, good point. It, it, it's Corey, it's not a new it. chapter of uh, Winning Pony unless there's, like, some huge earth-shattering twist at the end of the chapter that just sends things off in a completely different direction. <laughs> and is horribly depressing, and yeah. <laughs> oh, that is my kind of story. I need to get around to that one. Mm-hmm. It's good. What's that? Horribly depressing. The Sam alert goes up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do it with good reason, and yeah, I ate that up. <laughs> yeah, and you wouldn't expect it to be when you first start reading it, because it's about Glenn Quagmire as a 
at home, but it seriously becomes this serious, emotional, impactful story. Oh, I really man. need to get around to reading. Yeah, I love that. See, that's that's perfect. Okay. Go <laughs> ahead. Do you have something to say? Uh, uh, well, it's not really a fanfic, but uh, there's a uh, new episode of Doctor Who's Adventures uh, drop just recently, which uh, which I have not watched yet, but I'm I'm sure it's good. Uh, since that made by Pony and Box, and I'm, I really like those guys. Uh, I still need to watch that series because I I started watching uh, Doctor Who's an assistant. And then I had to stop because there was a two-part episode that crossed over with Doctor Who's Adventures, and I didn't want to like get into that without knowing the other series. So I've just been like on hold until I've seen both. Mm-hmm. It, it's pretty. It's pretty good. I've talked with uh, Squeak, who writes it. Who uh, he he wrote the fic that it was originally based on, and currently writes that series as, as well. He, he's a really nice guy, and I've I've been meaning to get caught up, but I just haven't had a chance to yet. What with since I've recently moved and got married and have a kid on the way. I've been busy. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to the main part of this episode. All of us, and I do mean all of us, not just the guests, are going to be answering some questions about what we love. Uh, let's start with Pav. All right, first, what is your name? <laughs> what is your quest? Wait, wait, so, so, slow down. Um, these are hard. <laughs> what is your favorite color? I did not have scratch paper prepared. I, I, I need a calculator, a number two pencil. No one said there would be math. <laughs> okay, honestly, though. Uh, what do you love about fan fiction? Oh, man. I think there are just so many different stories that can be explored with, with these characters, these settings. <laughs> I mean, even you, you, you have, you know, stories like Winning Pony that's, you know, taking things in completely different directions on a chapter-by-chapter basis. You have all of these romance fix. You have uh, my, my uh, good buddy, uh, G.A.P. Axey. Uh, he just recently uh, started publishing a Bioshock crossover, mm-hmm. Vision. Mm-hmm. Which, what, where is that? I must know where that is immediately. I want to I I know that also. Vision. Vision. Yes. It, um... <laughs> It's up on Fin Fiction. He just put out like an 18k chapter a couple days ago on that one. Oh, spells. So th- right, I'm opening Notepad and writing <laughs> down. How do you spell that? Vision, like scene. You oh, can just see vision. vision. Okay, pen. got it. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah. So I mean, you got you got all these crazy different stories that are being told, and they're all in this case they're all about ponies or i mean you know you can have fan fiction of just about anything really but i mean it, people are just taking things in completely different directions and really telling their own stories to these characters and it, it's really just kind of impressive to see all, all of these different viewpoints but all you know unified with, with this uh this one universe okay good i like that answer um, why do you love My Little Pony? Is it still me, or are we bouncing around? Oh, no, it's still you. Okay. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's, I, I actually, you know, uh, work today here for, for me was kind of crazy, so I you know, just needed to kind of unwind here before the interview. I, I just popped in an episode of Ponies and just kind of kicked back, and it just the, the, the colors, the music, the, the characters, the, the, the heartwarming feel of everything, it, you know, it just really, it makes you feel good inside. It, it's just something that is so different than anything else that's out there. And so just to have that kind of, you know, heart melting feeling is just, it, it's really nice to, to have that kind of show available. Okay. That is also a fantastic answer. All right. Now, here's the most important one. Talk about one thing you absolutely love and why everyone should ex- here should experience it. Oh, jeez. <laughs> it can be a show, a movie, a comic book, an anime, anything. Oh, man. Uh, that's a hard question. Yeah. I know. That's an Maybe interesting that's, one. That's... Huh, let's see. One thing that everyone should experience. Um, I guess I would probably have to say, like, you know, well, I mean, you know, Ponies would be the obvious answer. But, uh, you know, I I think probably one of my 
favorite shows before getting into Pony was uh, th this sketch comedy show that was on Adult Swim. Tim and Eric, awesome show, great job. <laughs> I, I don't know. A anyone here? No. no, no. I, I've, I've heard of it. I've heard I haven't it. myself okay. watched it. Yeah. <laughs> seen it. it seen some. Th th this is this is just basically my my friend who I, I forced him to watch this show. He basically very derisively d defined this as just two idiots who were given a lot of money and a video camera and are just running around. It is just this very irreverent, just kind of farcical sketch comedy. It, it, it just it really just some some beautiful comedy moments and you know just something I really go for. Okay. <laughs> Now, uh, between you and who will go next, which I won't reveal yet, we have an email from our great, great fan, Bulletin. And we're kind of interspersing all of the different stuff this time. It's fun. Well, no, it's basically, go yeah, well, yeah, we're doing that, but it's going like, it goes, have a, per a person, another person, an email. Yeah. Like, mail. Yeah, that's cool. So, dear Brony Book Club. Hey guys, Bullet Nick here. I saw your latest announcement for the 20th episode of the Burning Book Club, and then I came straight here to give you guys my little rant about my likes and wants when it comes to fanfiction. First, I'd like to apologize for my absence and the lack of activity of communication with you guys, but my life has just gotten a lot busier, and I have a tougher schedule to keep up with from now on. And I just had to adjust to a new life, sort of. So that's why you haven't heard too much of me. But I still keep an eye out for you guys, and I know you've been totally awesome and amazing for keeping this book club alive and fascinating. Well, thank you. Oh, yay. So, multiple guests, huh? Wow, you guys are really making the podcast grow into something bigger, more collaborative, and allowing more of an exchange of ideas between authors that might not have a chance to do so otherwise. Mm. It's great to see you guys growing and establishing yourself more in the Brony fanfiction community. Who knows what awaits you? Also, I really liked your interview with Corey Williams. Having him back again is a great news for me. I actually oh, really, uh, I really like his series, and I'm kind of sad he hasn't written more of that particular series. But oh well, uh, I would say yes. Uh, we loved the interview with Corey too. Corey's awesome. <laughs> you could not. Take You're here. <laughs> Uh, thank you, uh, I also really, really like Jason Human, author of Anthropology, whom he had on episode 9. But it's okay. Just three good bro Brony authors sounds, uh, together sounds like an amazing episode all by itself. Uh, yeah, if I, like, if I really had the chance, I would get like, you know, a ton of people on here. Like, I'd be like, okay, Urban Meadows. I'd love to have Urban Meadows on again. Mm. Uh, Palio Prince from last episode, we could have him on again. I still plan on maybe having him back sometime. But yeah. Pretty much yeah, everyone you know, has been fun to talk to. Yeah. Interview all the guests. <laughs> Interview all the guests. Yes. But for now, I just want to uh, share some of my thoughts. My favorite episodes of MLP are the adventure ones, the epic ones, ones where they all gather up and have an exciting adventure. I'm not so much of a solving a problem slash issue of episode lover. I prefer the stuff where adventure happens and stuff gets done. I enjoy character development to happen with a quieter and less intense, uh, to happen during those quieter and less intense moments. So you care about the characters there and know who they are and what, why they're having this adventure. So yeah, I prefer to have all those episodes that focus on adventure and interesting character development. If I remember correctly, Lauren Foss said those were, that's what she was planning to do with the series, but even if she's not a big part of it anymore, they still have a, we still have a ton of those kind of episodes. As to why I love the series in particular, well, it's not my most favorite thing in the world. I mean, I like the ponies. But I like it mostly because it's an interesting combination of childlike, but not childish, focus on morals and lessons and interesting characters with depth and flaws as well as a world to be explored, full of enemies and danger and excitement. All those elements combined contribute greatly to my enjoyment of the series, as well as many other people's, I assume. The characters swiping ponies are actually very human, and that's what allows the viewers to connect with them and feel emotions for them. But the series also allows for, like I said, adventure and excitement and these weird, fantastic situations that are fun to watch, especially with characters we can understand. I can rant a little more about fanfiction. I like fanfiction for a lot of reasons, but I think the most important one is this. Fan fiction is a representation of a fan's love for the work. Expressively, uh, expressive create, uh, expressed creativity, I think is what he's trying to say. Creating something to share the love and appreciation. Fan fiction is how a fan can express such a joint for work that they feel compelled to create something new because of it. And like it so much, they feel both confidence and willingness to try and recreate the world they love. It's about loving it so much you can't help but imagine situations in your head and sharing them with the world. It's all about fans putting their love into something creative and expressive, and sometimes even amazing, admirable, and breathtaking. Fan fiction is developing your skills through something you love. It's about trying to understand and analyze characters that allows for a deep appreciation of the work itself. And as for other series I like, well, let me tell you about Homestuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Let uh, me I'm tell you. Get trolled. <laughs> 
Nick, uh, you need to meet my friend Daniel. He's trying to get me to read Homestuck. I will one day. One day. I'm starting. It's really slow yeah. at first, but I am honest. <laughs> yeah. Not. I, oh, go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say, you know, it, it, it really just kind of has this slow start and just you know kind of seems interesting, to the, and then it just kind of it just has these wham moments that it's like you know, oh wow, that's kind of interesting. Oh wow, that's oh wow, you know, it, it really just kind of sucks you in after a while. I, I'm personally. I've I've got to be like behind at this point, but oh yeah, I I gotta got love the Homestuck. Okay, I I, no, I'm I, st- oh, go ahead. <laughs> I was like I, I I still need to read it. I've tried on many separate occasions to start it from the beginning, and I always get to a certain point. And it, it's not that it's bad; it's just that I just realize it's like oh, it can't possibly be this long, and then it's like oh crap, it is long. Oh, um, it is. <laughs> oh yeah. And and the th- the thing is. Uh, the guy wrote Problem Sleuth before it, and when he wrote, started making Homestuck, he was just like, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to make Homestuck quite as long as Problem Sleuth, and that, that was a bold-faced lie if there ever was one. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> See, I know the length is probably the most intimidating thing for me. A lot of people say they're intimidated by the complexity or anything of that, and I just have to say three words to that. House of Leaves. I've read that <laughs> twice, and I plan on a third one. I'm sorry. It's not qu- Neither, I don't think, it's quite reaches a Ulysses level, but House of Leaves is so insanely complex, I can't imagine Homestuck being more so. It's, it's yeah. dense. It's very dense. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, no, nah, just kidding. I'll spare you guys with a torture sprint. But seriously, I like Homestuck, and I really like Code Lyoko as, uh, Evolution, as well as the original Code Lyoko. I also like Doctor Who, but I stopped following it about a year ago. Why would you do that? Seriously. Get back on it! And I really don't read as much fan fiction as I'd like for any of these series, so I can't give you guys a lot of recommendations. Anyway, sorry if my message really wasn't helpful for your next episode. I wish you guys the best of luck with it, and I know you'll do an amazing job and have tons of fun. Take care, guys. As always, have a nice day. Bullet Nick. P.S. But seriously, Homestuck is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Nick. And yes, that was a very helpful email. You are an articulate person. Yeah, look at something there. All right. Next up, Sam. Oh, yay. My turn. Yep, all right, what's your name? Sam. What's your quest? Uh, to play all the video games and teach people about them. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what is the capital of Assyria? Uh, wait, oh wait, just a sec. Hey, no! <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, no. We're <laughs> If you didn't have such a noisy keyboard, you could have gotten away with that. <laughs> Dang it, foiled again. Stupid keyboard. So, <laughs> only you need an Android phone, just pull it up on that on the, on the slide. I do have an Android phone. Oh, I'm just not that smart, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> not a clever pony. Oh. Nope. <laughs> uh, what do you love about fan fiction? Okay, um... I mean, in general, the same thing I love about any good story, you know, just the story, the struggles, the characters, etc. But fan fiction specifically, I part of this probably comes from the huge perspective shift that I had when I first started co-hosting this podcast. Because, you know, beforehand I was definitely one of the... I'd read a bit of fan fiction a few years earlier, and I was just like, okay, this is all crap. This is stupid. But um, since since co-hosting this, I've begin, I've begun to see how some random person who likes some random thing can create something truly amazing. Mm. And that kind of astounds me. I mean, the fact that some, I mean, you know, all the stories by the authors here, and for that matter, all the authors that we've interviewed, um, just, you know, they were really good, surprisingly good. And, I mean, you know, something like Fallout Equestria is honestly among, if not just straight up, the best thing I've ever read. Imagine how freaking long it is, you know, that's that's not just some person going, oh, I want to combine Fallout and ponies. You know, like, these people, these authors actually put so much effort into it and create something so amazing, despite the fact that they're not getting paid for it, they're not professional, they're just someone who likes a show. And that really amazes me. I really love that. I don't have a slow clap software, but you deserve one. <laughs> well, yeah. Put it in post. <laughs> put it in post. That works. <laughs> gotcha. All right. Yeah. Why do you love My Little Pony? Oh, man. I've been trying to think. T- 
You should have given me these questions beforehand, because ever since I heard... No! Them, you need the on-the-spot answers! That's the point! <laughs> uh, but I'm not good at them. Okay. It's... Uh, okay. See, part of, and it is kind of the cop-out answer in a way because it's so obvious in this case, part of it is the, the fandom. I mean, like, the... I, I love the show. It's not my favorite show ever or anything, but it's the show that I'm most actively involved in. That you know, that most pe a lot of people might say that it's my favorite show just because I talk about it more and stuff. Because when it comes down to it, it's the most fun to be involved in the fandom mm -hmm. of of any fandom I've ever been a part of. Um, but in terms of why I love it, I've, I've just got to say that I it's probably because of the characters and how they're written. I really appreciate, I, I mean, you know, my favorite show, Avatar The Last Airbender. You know, I, I appreciate a children's show that takes an, an innocent and yet not entirely simple-minded approach to morality and does so by telling interesting stories with characters that are actually genuinely well-developed, that have a lot of good, funny moments and serious moments. And, I mean, you know, all of these characters are just so well-written and so interesting and so much more complex than first glance and you know they all have something that i love about them and it's just really awesome to see how they how they change and grow and just how they act throughout all the adventures of the show that's probably the main thing i love about it so everything's amazing seriously the show is just incredible <laughs> all righty so uh before so i just realized i'm saying the word love so much in this episode i wish in post i could just add that little sound effect for the Nostalgia <laughs> Critics Month of Love. <laughs> oh, you might be able to. Oh, you can try. Uh, no. I'm too to lazy add... to do that. Okay, point taken. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What you should do is you should add the song from the Powerpuff Girls where it's like, love, 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 makes the whole world go wrong. You need to add that in. <laughs> okay, that should, be, that should be like opening or ending theme. <laughs> that really... Here we go. <laughs> so... Last question, Sam. Oh, I hate this. Talk about one thing you absolutely love, uh, and why everyone should experience it. You gotta go for one. I day. have to do one. You have to. <laughs> it doesn't have to be your favorite. Thing. Well, it I know, but there's so like many of them. Go <laughs> <laughs> a die. Okay. Anything at all. I'm gonna think of stuff later and regret not saying them. But how mm -hmm. one you that's already in your mind that you. I'm going to go with, I'm, I hate, I'm going to go with Shadow of the Colossus. Oh, Ooh, Shadow yeah. of the Colossus. I know, oh, I know, good, I, nice. I know I have to go with the video game, because that's what I do, but between, you know, Bioshock, Final, Final Fantasy, freaking Bastion Spec Ops, I don't know, but I, I, I decided to go with Shadow of the Colossus. Just such... I, I would say, in my opinion, it's one of the greatest works of art I've ever seen in, in, in video games or movies or literature or otherwise. Um, <clears throat> just, I mean, outside of the creative gameplay, because, you know, you expect that from a good video game. Such a... It's one of those where some people who play it may look back on it and go, wait, what, what story? Shadow of the Colossus barely even had a story, but those who really look into it will see so much so amazingly much there. It's such a well-crafted tragedy, and just everything about it is beautiful. Mm. And it's just really amazing and good. You sure I can't mention any more? <laughs> You're mean. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll give you one more. Oh, yay, well now I need to think of that one. <laughs> oh, God, <damn> it. <laughs> oh, I already mentioned a video no. game, so I'll just go with a... No, what? Someone started saying something. Oh, so yeah. Who took the candy? Wait, no, no, your ahead. <laughs> okay. Just since I already said a video game, I'll go with the show and just elaborate on Avatar The Last Airbender. Mm. Okay. Just, just, I cannot emphasize, you know, I don't care who you are, what you like, what you're into, I don't care. I cannot emphasize how much you must see this show. Like, and from beginning to end. I don't mean, like, find some random episode on Nickelodeon one day and watch it. I mean, start at book one, go through book three, and then watch The Legend of Korra. It's... I, I would say that it is to children's television what some of the best Disney movies and such are to children's film. You know, it, it's 
for kids, it's kid-friendly, and yet it is such a well-crafted story with incredible characters and so much originality in the world and development. I can think of very, very few complaints I have with the show, and they're all so minor that they don't even matter. So, you know, do that. It's good. Okay, I'll call that good. I was just say, when I ever try to get people into it, I, I do, you know, want them to start at the beginning, but my always way to hook someone who's hesitant is just show them Zuko alone oh. from season two. Yeah. Because that episode is such a great... It doesn't spoil anything for the series. No. No, no okay, honestly, it doesn't, really. All it does is introduce... It all does introduce you to the world and the style of the show. Yeah. And it makes you go, I would like to make see a show of this. These powers are interesting. The character's backstory is cool. I'd like to see more of this. Yep. And it's a samurai movie mm-hmm. in one episode. <laughs> Basically. It's a very good episode. Yes. All right. Next, Cavonde. Uh-oh. All right. So, I'm going to skip the, the Monty Python joke. Uh, I was oh, already, I, have to do this. I was even uh, preparing my act. Oh, okay. He was prepared. What is your name? Come on. I am Cavonde of Bakersfield. <laughs> All right. What is your quest? To seek the Holy Grail. What is your favorite color? Blue. No. Yellow! <laughs> I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> uh, so I, I have uh, to hang up now because I just got kicked into the pit, so. Okay. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, There's internet down there. What, <laughs> what do you love about There's me? Wi-Fi. <laughs> Good Wi-Fi in health. Um, <laughs> about fan fiction in general, I've, I've uh, if I was just going to answer straight off, I would have sounded a lot like uh, Pat and Sam. Um, but since you've given me a little time to think about it, I'm going to be all metaphysical or whatnot. But I think like... Not fair. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think a big part of it is that uh, everybody who kind of gets invested in a show kind of internalizes the characters, or at least their favorite characters, and kind of gives them their own, like, kind of brings life inside their own mind. And I think when you're writing, you get to see people who, you know, if they they really have a grasp on the characters, kind of just putting these characters in situations that you would never see in the show, but because they have such a good grasp on the character and they really have an idea of who it is, that you're able to kind of get a realistic, believable uh, presentation of what they would do and how they would react in these situations. And not just ponies, any fandom where you have people that have a really good grasp of the characters, it's really interesting and it's really exciting. And it's cool to really get a, a, a genuine look at, you know, what would happen in the situation with these characters. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. That was very metaphysical. Cool. Well, yeah. <laughs> good stuff. So, why do you love My Little Pony? Uh... It's just a really good show. Um, I love the animation. I love the voice acting. I love the characters. I love the little details they put into, you know, the, that the animators put into all the episodes just to add that little bit of extra characterization and humor t- to all the characters. Like, Rarity in particular gets so much minor details and, like, ex- expressions, body language, that really sells the humor of her character that you wouldn't see in a show without that kind of, like dedication to quality and production values. Uh, and it's just, it's a really, it's a fascinating fantasy world. I've never really, I mean, I never watched the previous ones. I don't know how much it's based off of the original My Little Pony shows, but Not this fairly. whole idea, yeah, well, it works. It's, you <laughs> yeah. know, this little isolated kingdom uh, that's barely, like everybody in it's living, you know, happily and peacefully, and they don't really know, but outside this kingdom, there's all this, You've got the freaking monster manual. It's Hasbro. You've got everything you could find in D&D, plus alien shapeshifters and demonic <laughs> chaos gods. You know, all this stuff right outside their borders, and it's held together just... It's so fragile and nobody realizes it. It's a really interesting world. <laughs> that is a really good answer. So, for the thing that you love and you want everyone to watch, um, you, it's okay if you don't say it. But there is one thing I know that me and you could discuss for quite a while. Well, yeah, there are probably two. I was kind of torn between Young Justice and reading the Dresden Files, but uh, um, both. <laughs> okay, we'll do both. <laughs> okay, we'll do it live! Do it! <laughs> um, 
I'm sure everybody who has, you know, been uh, listening to the show already knows that Jim Butcher is awesome, and they really are depriving themselves by not reading his stuff. <laughs> um, so I just want to say that, you know, if I could just capture his brain and, like, keep him in a jar next to my desk and have it give me ideas for cool things to write about, then that would be awesome, but I would also be depriving everybody of the Dresden Files books, so I really can't do that until he finishes the series, so... Jim, you're safe. <laughs> after the after <laughs> yeah. So really quick though, I have to ask you: Have you seen? I uh, you seen. Have you read Cold Days yet? Oh yeah, it was. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we. I don't think a single book of the series has that many twists in a row. Oh in one... yeah, I know. I actually, um, I read it and I got the audio book too because they got James Marsden back on it, and James Marsden is amazing. Um, I had that on my. <laughs> but oh yeah, man that. And we can't see anything but <laughs> the but, Oh yeah. the tension the tension <laughs> I I wanna see what happens I with I mean uh, everything Harry and Molly and God <laughs> everything. That is the most No, why would you end it there? I know, like oh holy crap. I mean there's so much to, there's so many ways it can go and so many directions it can go and I Have you really wanna see thing for skin days? For which one? Our skin, our skin game, I believe, is the next one. Oh, no, I didn't know even had a title yet. We have a title. We know it involves a heist. Harry's planning a heist. And he has to. And his allies are those he really wishes he wasn't working with. Ah. Denarians are in some way involved in the story. Good. And I think, I think that's it. I think I, we know rumored like, things he's not sure about, but that's what we know about. And it's called Skin Days? Yes. And the last book had a bunch of Nagloshi. Skin game. Skin game. Uh, this could be bad. <laughs> could be really bad. And then the other one, yeah, you're just saying. Young Justice. Everybody <laughs> seriously watch this show. What is wrong with you? Why weren't you watching it? It got canceled because you didn't watch it and buy the toys. I don't even know where the toys were to buy, so that's kind of the problem, but... <laughs> oh, God. It was so, yeah, so good. Let me tell you listeners a story about a man named Greg Wiseman. Greg Wiseman was a television writer. Gargoyles. Yes, he made a show called Gargoyles uh, that a lot of us loved. It was really good. And then after two seasons, they kicked him off of it. And the show got really bad. And then later... What are you talking about? There was only two seasons. There were only <laughs> two exactly. seasons. Yes. What are there you talking about? And, there was... <laughs> and Chrono Trigger didn't have a sequel. But we'll get into that later. Oh. I, I think they're, they're talking about, like, a chrono break. Yeah, but, I mean, it, it, it's a shame that they didn't ever make a, a sequel for, like, PS1 or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah, they got yeah, a, a cute Australian that, that miniseries. had good music, but not... It, it's a shame they didn't have a sequel that had good music, but did horrible things if you like the first, I first game. Or, we're getting off topic. I can't judge that game. <laughs> what like, topic? Chrono <laughs> Cross is a spin-off spiritual successor type thingy. Well, oh. it's kind of a direct sequel. I mean, Luca shows up at some point, I believe. Yeah. I, I, uh, yeah, we, we, we can go on like on that, I'm sure, but... Uh, let's get back to the tragedy no, no, of Greg Weisman. Greg, we'll come back to that. <laughs> we'll come back to that. We'll debate that later. Yeah, yeah. Okay. After Greg Wiseman did that, after he was kicked off, he made his own show called The Spectacular Spider-Man, <gasps> which is widely considered the best Spider-Man cartoon the equivalent of a Spider-Man cartoon to what the Batman animated series was to Batman. Oh, yeah. It completely captured the character and was really fun. And then after two seasons, it was canceled. <sighs> and then he put his heart and soul into making a show called Young Justice, the perfect adaptation of the DC Universe. And then it was canceled after two seasons. This kind of Joss Whedon of animation? <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. Basically, yeah. That, you, you got it pretty on the money there. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it was. Why did it have to end there? We got to see Dark Side, but he didn't get to do anything. I know, it. and they've been Just they've been building up to it. <laughs> no, he was uh, no. <laughs> he was he was on the uh, Apocalypse, but okay, you're just standing there. <laughs> they, oh, it's so they did such a great job throughout the second season building up Glorious Godfrey, and like I was reading comments like on on episode reviews and people who didn't know who Glorious Godfrey was just thought he was this kind of abrasive, like, Glenn Beck slash uh, Bill O'Reilly knockoff, yeah. but, like, I'm like, no, dude, it's Glorious Godfrey, man, this is 
there's more going on here. And then they finally get around to the reveal at the end, and... Ah. Nope. So, okay, really quickly, I have to ask you this. Do you have the same theory idea of what he was planning for if he did get another season with... Because he did say all seasons would have time skips between them if he got more. And with that idea, since there'd be another one in, you know, a different team kind of thing, change... Uh, change Beast Boy was like, what, 10, 11, about-ish, that age? I think 13, 13 maybe 14. I think he was yeah, like okay. 8. He's young. So, at that age, you know, and then there's a time skip, so he'd be Changeling. Mm. And if there's a Changeling and there's a Nightwing and there's a Kid Flash, why can't there be a Cyborg, a Raven, and a Starfire? Mm. You could have had the original New Team Titans. Yeah, and instead of replacing it with yet another Titans show... Yes, and like they did. Yet Todd. another Batman. <laughs> oh, God, that Batman show. Oh, the poster makes me so angry. Uh, at least Annoying Orange got renewed. What? Uh, 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 <laughs> no. Man, I, really? That, those oh, are some of the fewest serious. words that have ever caused my faith in humanity to plummet so low. <laughs> <laughs> there, there is no God. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so you could tell we both love Young Justice. Um, I do plan, like, they need to put out the DVDs in a better way. They're doing them right now. The season one, at least, is just those four episode packs. Yeah. And then if you get enough, you get the whole show. I'm like, that's fucking bullshit! Who buys those? I don't understand how they can be making money on packaging and distributing them. And nobody I know ever buys little four episode packs because they're a rip. Everybody waits for the full season or buys it on iTunes or downloads it. Yep. Everyone in America. They do that. They do that with Adventure Time too, and that makes me sad. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It's irritating. Unacceptable! <laughs> Unacceptable! <laughs> Ten thousand years dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> Only character I know from Adventure Time. <laughs> this episode is all what? over the place. <laughs> Dude, you get five nerds together, that'll happen. <laughs> we knew this yeah. going into it. We had to. <laughs> uh, I, I promise not to bring up Chrono Trigger except maybe two or three more times. Well, I really I, like I, Chrono I, Trigger, no. which is why I really want to read your play fic. <laughs> yeah, I've never actually gotten a chance to play Chrono Trigger. I'll, I'll have to give that a try sometime. Oh, <laughs> oh so good. <laughs> best troll I've ever heard. <laughs> I almost, I almost believe you for like a quarter of a second. <laughs> you said that with a complete straight face. Oh yeah, yeah. That, was amazing. that was amazing. I think your avatar is scowling Twilight, and she has a straight face. <laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> okay, so next is uh, me. <gasps> um, all right. Uh, you. What is my name, Roy? What is my quest? To watch everything ever. Um, what is the airspeed velocity of a, a flying squallow? Uh, it depends if it is African or European. I, I don't know. I don't you know, if you, have, uh, if you have an iPhone and you ask Siri that, she actually answers. Just FYI, I'm a nerd, so I discovered that. Really? Yeah, that's wonderful. That's hilarious. <laughs> so what do I love about fan fiction? Um, I, you guys have all given good answers, so I'm going to give uh, my favorite thing about it. I love that fan fiction allows people to, uh, I guess, cut their teeth with writing. It allows us to work with prose, work with dialogue, work with planning things out, work on story structure, all these things, and have people go, you know what, you can work on this, you know what, you can work on this. It's like having a billion editors. It's amazing. <laughs> and it's fun. It's being able to post something, just a chapter, and see how things like, people like it, and when they do, just being able to meet people and talk to them. It's both a community and a great way to grow as a writer to get better at it. And that's amazing. That's crazy awesome. It, that's definitely true. I mean, it, it is, it's all the more true in this fandom, too, because, you know, if you were posting fan fiction for a lot of other shows, you would go to fanfiction.net, you would post it there, and you'd get, you know, just a complete fraction of the view count you get here. And here, you know, people are getting, like, tens of thousands of views on their story and all, all these comments, and it, it really is a terrific opportunity, all this fantastic collaboration. You're right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so really why is. do I love My Little Pony? Why do I love My Little Pony? 
That's a really hard question. Oh, come on. You thought through this and you know it. No, actually, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you come up uh, with these uh, questions and then not actually okay, think about okay, your answers? Okay. I love Preparation. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wrote these questions five minutes before we started recording. <laughs> Okay. Welcome to my show, everybody! The preparation becomes uh, procrastination. <laughs> Wonderful. GJ, man, GJ. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, now, now, honestly, why do I love Mile Pony? Uh, we've all gone over a lot of reasons. For me, I think it mostly comes down to character development. Uh, or, or rather, not even development, character interaction, or just character. Uh, characters are all, in dialogue are my favorite things in almost every medium. Uh, I always love getting attached to characters. I love seeing how, and my favorite thing is seeing how they interact with each other. And my little point is to great at that. It's not only did you have these six characters; it's that you have these six main characters with really cool and unique interaction between them. They each have this kind of inter, you know, they have this specific bond that's different between all of them. And getting to see that on screen is always good. And the dialogue is fantastic. I love hearing Pinkie Pie's craziness. I love Rarity's over dramatic BS. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good. Okay, I gave Sam two, so I'm going to take two. That's and I guess, uh, yeah. Well, Kavande used one of mine, and I think that. Cause I didn't want to talk about I was like, well, he has Young Justice, so I can skimp off him. So the first one's one I share with Corey here. Uh, we're going to be able to talk about this. First, I'd like to say something. Web comics do not get enough love. <laughs> Web comics, oh. as a medium. Yeah. As a medium, they do not get nearly much appreciation. A lot of people just think of, they think they're good, the ones that are good. But they think of Penny Arcade, they think of XKCD, they think of these ones that are gag day kind of stuff. And those are great, I love them. But there are a lot of really good story webcomics out there. Oh, yeah. Yep. Girl Genius is to, one. Oh yeah, Girl Genius is indeed one that I need to read. I keep looking yeah. like, I will get to it one day. And actually, you just uh, reminded me that Ava's Demon must have updated since I last checked. <laughs> So, awesome. Yes, Ava's Demon's a good one. I don't know how you react. We don't know how to pronounce her name. We're just going to Ava, Ava, whatever. Yeah. But Ava, Ava was with an E, isn't it? Because that's Evangelion. But, uh, never mind. Well, maybe? I don't know. Whatever. Okay. Okay, moving on. Uh, like I said, web comics. But yeah, this thing Corey and I have read called El Gunish Dog. <laughs> yes. I knew you this was going to come up. I, I, this, this was a setup from the start. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'll fall into my trap. Okay. So, when I was, I think, in 6th, 7th grade, pretty young, I randomly stumbled across that webcomic on the internet. It was the first one I'd ever found. And I was like, yeah, screw it, I'll read it. So I read from the beginning, and I liked it. I got up, I think at the time, the newest story arc was Grace's Birthday Party, something around that area. A while ago. It was, long. it was like a, a million years long, but it was very good, so I didn't mind that. <laughs> yeah. um, but yeah, so how to describe it? Um, I think one of the best descriptions is uh, the TV Tropes quote page is, it's the most perverted, squeaky clean comic on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, true. It easily involves incredibly perverted characters, but is so clean at the same time. Uh, it is basically the weirdest thing in the world. It's magic, techno- sci-fi, it's slice of life, it's craziness, and it's amazing. It's literally just these eight main characters going through random stuff with their character, their characters evolving throughout the entire thing, having to deal with threats, having to have adventures, while at the same time post, uh, having to do with kind of normal-ish teenager stuff, though a lot of it isn't normal. Um, yeah, it's... It's, and one of the best things about it is the art evolution. I mean, geez. If you look at the yeah. original mm. few strips, it's just like, wow, that's terrible. That, that makes, like, newspaper comics look like Blackest Night. Wow. Huh. Uh, um, <laughs> wow. And you're like, wow, this is incredible. Like, this is really good art, and the art tells the jokes. Uh, because Elgo oh, Shy is freaking hilarious. It, it is. really is. One of, I think one of the funniest things on the internet. And the characters are great. Uh, it has some incredibly heartwarming and tear-jerking moments, too. Uh, it's made me cry a couple times. I'm, not, I'm mad enough to admit that. Um, Corey, what would you like to say about it? I, I, uh, I, well, I, I, I actually have a, a lot to say. It's, it, 
it's one of the web comics, and not enough web comics actually have this trait where it really rewards you if you've read through it from the beginning and you're still into it now, because there's stuff brought up long before it's ever elaborated upon. Like, the, the storyline that they have now is elaborating on a character who hasn't really done much, who was introduced, like, about four or five years ago. It, so oh, it, it reward if you're... I, hmm? I'm sorry, what do you say? I was like, I was like oh... You're talking about Diane, right? Yeah. Or... <laughs> Di- uh, Di- Diane. I want to know what's going on with her. Seriously, that's I know, really... She's, I... She's, she's super interesting. It's really it's really interesting. I, I'm kind of no I'm kind of seeing where they're going. I'm kind of hoping they do, like, involve her more with the main cast. Okay, we're, we're getting into... I'm, I'm getting yeah. off topic. So, <laughs> oh, like we didn't do it, worse. It, it... Well, that's Go true. Go for it. Give in to the dark Chrono side. Chrono- Chrono, Chrono Cross never happened. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Chrono so, uh, Cross. What? <laughs> what is this? Chrono, Doctor Chrono Trigger did movie ha- in which you speak. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that did happen. If that didn't happen, the Ace Doctor. The the only Sorry. Chrono Trigger sequel was Xeno Gears. <laughs> oh, Xeno Gears. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting theory. I I did enjoy it. Okay, but anyway, so it. Algunishab, it really rewards you if you've been invested in it the whole time. The first, like, like Roy was saying, the first few arcs in it, they, they aren't drawn that well, and I think he, uh, he, the author kind of hits his stride later on as far as storytelling goes, because stuff brought up very early on hasn't, there's stuff brought up near the beginning of the series that hasn't really been elaborated on yet, but it, it kind of has qualities that I associate with a Raymond Chandler novel is that the, the main focus is really the characters. There's like a really complicated plot, but it doesn't really matter as much as the characters do, uh, which is which is something I've kind of tried to adopt in my writing. Like, the, the plot is interesting, and you're invested in it, but it will never be as important as the, the stuff that directly involves the characters and the little arcs that they go through. Mm-hmm. It's a... Yeah. Uh, it's... To date, the only webcomic that I, as soon as I wake up, I will check to see if it's updated, just because these, I'm that invested in the character and story to know where it's going. And the author has a habit of, he updates Monday through Friday, which is impressive all on its own, uh, but he has a habit of making the most evil cliffhangers on Friday. So your whole weekend, oh. you'll be like, I, I want to know it. And he's been, he has to be doing that on purpose, because like the past few weeks, he's been t- been evil with that. <laughs> That's, that, that seriously, has to be intentional. <laughs> it's great because I've been, you know, like I said, I've been reading it for so long, and now he's doing stuff where it makes me question stuff I'd known for so long. Where I'm like, yeah, these two characters are together, they're a good couple, and now he's like, really think about it, and I'm like, shit, you're my favorite, you can call me. Oh, shy. I would say uh, the the area where it starts getting into, uh, where it actually starts kind of growing the beard, as they would say, is uh, sis- the first sister arc. Uh, that really started getting really, yeah, really emotional, really, really well done. Yes, we love that. And then the other one I'm going to talk about, I don't know, I know Sam C, but he's probably not going to, he would not gush that. I've mentioned a few times in here before, The Melancholy of Harley Susan Mia. But I'm not going to be talking about the books very much. I'm going to be talking about the first season of the anime. Yep. Which I think is one of the best adaptations I've ever seen in my life. It, so, you know, they, they find out, okay, you have 14 episodes to adapt a series which at least at that point had been, what, five books, six books? It's now at the episode about ten. Actually, no, it must have been more like eight at the time, considering some plot hooks they threw in. But anyway, um, they, they did this, and so they noticed, well, okay, if we're going to adapt them in order, if we did it chronologically, the series wouldn't be very interesting, because the first couple episodes would just be, oh, here's the setup of the show, and then random fun adventures. <laughs> so they did what I think is one of the best decisions they did uh, could have done, which is the broadcast order. They purposely made the episodes to be broadcast out of order in a way that gives you the plot relevant episodes at a, in a way that they would feel right in a normal show. Like you have the random fillerish in between them, and then you have these, oh, so now this is explained. And it's even more intensified by the fact that You'll be watching episodes that chronologically take place after it. So they're vaguely referring to things that if you watch it chronologically, you're like, oh, yeah, I remember that. But here you're like, wait, what is that? What does that mean? 
And they do that completely on purpose, and it's really well done, allowing for a good 14-episode anime while at the same time allowing for a good chronological show. Then there is the production, which I don't think I've seen... I, I can't really think of too many things that have such a loving production. Uh, the amount of effort that went on to it is insane. Uh, it's been pointed out several times on the internet that the back... Uh, Harley takes place in a real Japanese city, and because of that, almost all the backgrounds in the show are actually exactly the same angle from real life. They perfectly do the backgrounds as if they were in that real place, which, wow, that's dedication. Yeah. Then there's the fact that the back... Because it's at high school... They don't skimp on the background characters. The random character... It feels almost, like I mentioned, like, it kind of feels like My Little Pony in that each of them has this distinctive design, and you feel like any of them could be a main character of their own show. You feel like they have their own lives and story going on, unlike a lot of other high school anime, which is just like, oh, we'll just give them a random character. Come on, we don't give a shit. Um, and then there is the fact that it, they were clearly doing it because they loved the series. They were able to do stuff... Uh, in the first ep- chronologically, the first episode alone, there are several references. One of, the, uh, or rather, uh, foreshadowings. One foreshadows an episode that shows up later in season two. Again, a season they didn't even know they would get. The other one foreshadows something that has not been animated yet or adapted yet, and it's seeming unlikely at this point it ever will be. So what? Or even later, uh, that episode re- uh, that got foreshadowed in, in the, that's in season two, uh, te- chronologically is in the middle of the season, and episodes after it have the remnants of that episode in the room, despite not having been done yet. <laughs> you, you could really tell they care, and it is easily my favorite adaptation ever, and my favorite anime ever, and I absolutely love it. And I'm just talking about that stuff, just if you want to know, I don't want to spoil a single thing about this show. Do not look it up on the internet. There are spoilers abound. And I'm not just talking about the anime. Even the light novels get spoiled a bunch. Um, I would say just try out the try the broadcast order for the first uh, season. See what you think of it. I would love to know. Hmm. And those are my two things. All right. So next we have another. Before we get, finish up with Corey, we got another email. From our friend Tricky Step. Hmm. Greetings, Roy and Sam, and congratulations to the 20th episode. Yay. Hooray. Uh, I know. Uh, you didn't say hey, hi to everyone else. Wow, tricky step, you're rude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, that's okay. I mean, I don't, I don't have feelings or anything. That's fine. Whatever. <laughs> oh, okay. Jeez. <laughs> what I love about My Little Pony actually comes from the fans. It shows that large groups of mature people from all over the world can enjoy a show about friendship without the cynicism prevailing modern culture. Mm-hmm. I like your show in particular because it highlights and discusses stories in a fun and informative way. You make both great, you both make a great pair of hosts, and the guests always seem to enjoy themselves, which means I can enjoy myself too. My favorite short story of all time hails from the, converse, uh, from the Conversion Bureau universe, Last Man Standing. It's a story where he's the last human being on Earth in the face of pornification. It deals with a crumbling world. It doesn't have an escapist, surreal view. It's definitely an experience to behold for oneself, and I can't recommend it enough. I will add that to my folder. I cannot say that I have a favorite MLP episode or character since they all accomplish uh, accomplish so much in unique, various ways. All ponies are best ponies because they embody friendship, and that can only happen with each other. Looking forward to the next episode, as always. Cheers, Tricky Step. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Hello, Rarity's best pony. That was nice. Oh, Rarity is best pony. You can be wrong. I, I, I actually, I was at a convention recently, and I heard an interesting theory that someone pointed out that Changeling is best pony because Changeling can be any pony. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Twist. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, and that means Corey's up last. So, what is your name? Corey Williams. <laughs> okay. What is your quest? To search the Holy Grail. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite color? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> what color? You cut off. Oh, you said, you, what you is you your gotta, favorite? You're going to say it. What is your favorite color? Can you guys hear me this at all? This parrot yeah, is no character. more. He has ceased to be... Oh, wait, wrong Monty Python reference. <laughs> <laughs> okay, really quick about that. I have acting class right now, and I was told we were doing another two to five minute scene uh, 
that's a big part of our, a three to five minute scene. And I was thinking, he's like, oh, you just didn't con- you did a scene from Rosencrantz and Guildenstern last. You probably do something serious this time. I was trying to think something. I'm like, wait a minute, I could do the dead parrot. <laughs> <stuff." laughs> Are you serious? serious? That's awesome. <laughs> that would be the coolest assignment of all time. I just have to get that, a big dead parrot. That's awesome. What do you love about fan fiction? The thing I really like about fan fiction, both writing it and reading it, is that it gives people a chance to explore things that you wouldn't really get a chance to see on the show itself. Uh, You get to see characters and situations that obviously you would never be able to see in the show and go more in depth and in some cases go to darker places uh, than you would normally go. in the actual show itself. Basically, the, the thing I really like about it is that uh, it get, basically everyone puts a little their own little spin on the My Little Pony world, and it's good to see everyone else's take on it. Um, especially in this fandom, where a, a lot of there's, I would probably say there's a higher percentage of good quality fix than there might be in other fandoms. Which is which is not which which might just be because there is a just a a because the My Little Pony fandom is so huge now, um, but really it's just seeing everyone else's spin on these characters and so in some cases doing things with them that even I've never thought about, and in some cases I think is more interesting than what the show itself is doing. It, it's really interesting to see and read about, and especially like with stuff involving background ponies who aren't explored at all, just like, now every background pony has a personality, just based on the fandom itself. And it's just, it, it, you you know a fandom has power where there can't be a single pony who isn't named and has a personality. That's (laughs) impressive. That's that's okay. How about the fact that we have Doctor Hooves, and now because we have Doctor Hooves, we we have now claimed that Colgate is Romana, uh, the blue pony with (laughs) Blonde hair and a, and the bow tie is the master, and then obviously the new uh, I don't know how we got this to be the fandom thing now, but the Pegasus with a lion for his cutie mark is Captain Jack. <laughs> I uh, love. I hadn't this heard fandom. that. That's, wow, I, I heard that last one, but that's yeah. Awesome. I think Discord Hooves started that one, and now everyone's like, I love that idea. Uh, Discord Hooves oh, no. is awesome. I've read some of that. Is that not? Really- I hope that's just not in my head. I hear it, too. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, Sam doesn't even know what that... Sam's still uh, in season, season two of... Season three. Uh, season three. Huh? Oh, you're getting there. Oh, season, season three. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, my you're mom likes it, too, and we started it at the same time, so we're watching it together. So, wait, did you get to blink? Not quite getting... No, last night, <gasps> we were two episodes away from it, and I didn't know that the two episodes right before it were a two-parter. The two-parter oh, where what? the doctor um, is, like, sometime in the 1800s, or, no, early 1900s and doesn't oh, remember who he is. Oh, that episode is oh it's really good, good but I didn't know that it was a two-parter. And so it completely, you know, it ends and didn't actually end, and I was really annoyed because I didn't have time for another one. So I'm still right in the middle of that. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that one's one of my favorites. Uh, but Blink yeah. is probably widely considered to be the best one in of in the new series, I very um, much look forward. I, I would to be inclined to say that it's. I, I would very much say that it's up there. Yeah. Uh, it's not my favorite, but it's definitely. I th- I personally say it's the best written episode. I just. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm a lo- I'm a huge fan of time travel, and the stuff it does with it is just crazy awesome. It's yeah, it's an amazing it really episode. I, I, yeah, I think the one that you're on though, uh, right now, Sam. Though that's probably my favorite, uh, or at least <laughs> up there, top three. It's yeah, really I. I Really, really like it so far. I really, so, I'm I'm really fond of it too. It's it's a really, especially when you watch the second uh, part, you're in for a treat because that's the the second part is fantastic. Okay, I, I haven't actually watched too much Doctor Who myself, but I I, I have this one friend who's a, a huge Whovian, and so we we uh, this one night we had a cultural exchange that he showed me a couple of uh, Doctor Who episodes, including Blink. <laughs> And I showed him a couple episodes of Pony, including Lesson Zero, and so it, it, it was nice. A little, little swap cool. me. Yep. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Where there was the next question? Oh yeah. So, what's your thing about my? What do you love about My Little Pony? 
Well, the big thing would be the characters and just the overall quality of the writing. There are... I, I would say that there are a lot of kid shows, I think, that kind of phone it in. It's, it's gotten a little bit better, especially with stuff like Adventure Time, which regular show, I guess you could technically call that a kid show when it's really <laughs> kind of not. That, yeah. That's kind of... That's, that's very much debatable. And... and the uh, that that one show, what's it called? The Amazing Adventures of Gumball. That's really good too. But but for a while, I think before shows like that came out, kid shows in general were, were just I think would kind of phoning it in. Like aside from Avatar, like a lot of stuff on Nickelodeon wasn't that great. Uh, there was a large gap. Showing... There, there was, was a large, large gap. gap. Yeah. From the end of the DCAU to Avatar. Even Lloyd. Mm, yeah. There was a big period where well, everybody just wanted to make SpongeBob. Uh, Sorry, and, I and hate was good. <laughs> yeah, I don't dislike <laughs> SpongeBob. Personally. was good for 100 episodes. SpongeBob oh, yeah. was good for 100 episodes and messed it up. <laughs> yeah. I have old feelings for SpongeBob, but I'm still just kind of mad on it now. Yeah, that, was it's good, the though. new episode. Yes. Like, that was Invaders good. That was good. Break, and that was good. Yes. But, uh, you, you would have things that are like, like Johnny Test which I still I still don't understand why people enjoy it yeah. and it's just, just stuff that's like not necessarily bad but just like super mediocre like you could tell it was like written at a marketing meeting like especially Johnny Test where it's just like he has a talking dog because kids like, like talking dogs and yeah, yeah. Stuff, stuff like that and with My Little Pony you get like even though it's made by Hasbro and as is the nature of Hasbro, like, like you know, part of their plan is to so sell toys. That's we accept that, but yeah. it could have been very easy to mess it up and just kind of phone it in, and they really didn't. They took their time, and you can tell, like, with every episode that they worked as hard as they could on it. There, that's not to say that there aren't good episodes and bad episodes, but I'd say almost most of the episodes are very good. Uh, Sleepless in Ponyville, I would say, is probably the closest thing to a perfect episode I've ever seen in the whole See, yeah, I don't yeah, know about that episode. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd say it's that one, uh, Lesson Zero, and Party of One are like tied for my favorite episodes. I, I would agree. I would agree with those as well. And what? what <laughs> I know. Uh, What's that? The show's oh, gone. Boy. It's just gone. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, See ya. Roy, did you? Roy, are you Where recording this from a truck? truck? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm kind of on the run from the cops. Uh, don't tell anyone. Uh, we are shooting this on location. <laughs> he had Sam Fred, uh, who was named, because he put it, uh, a sticker key mark on it. He has a big red truck that's Little Mac. <laughs> <laughs> that's Little funny. Mac. Hey, oh, but, yeah. but, it, but anyway, um, but just like, it's, I think Sleepless in Ponyville, if you wanted to show someone like one episode that encapsulated all the good things about it, that would be a good one because the animation was great in it. There was a lot of character stuff. It was it was hilarious, but it was also very touching, especially around the end of it. Mm -hmm. uh, the characters were consistent. There were a lot of character subtleties to all the characters, and you could tell there was continuity from the previous episodes, even though they didn't necessarily shove it in your face. Hmm. Uh, but you could tell there was some continuity, which is, I think, there. I think that's what appeals to a lot of older fans because we like continuity. Yeah. Amen. Uh, <laughs> hey, I, oh, yeah. I, I, I'm you sorry. Go ahead. But oh, it was okay. just like it's just the right the writing and the characters how they're, they're written. It's that is definitely the best part because everyone has a character who they attack who they think feel is their favorite and they're really attached to, and I don't, I don't think there's a single character that you would consider, like, the Scrappy, who is a bad character and shouldn't be in the show, and that's, and that's really saying something, because a lot of shows have there's no Wesley. one character. There's no Wesley, there's no Scrappy-Doo, there's no... There's no Adric. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> oh, you got that too? Okay, awesome! <laughs> yeah, I, I got it. <laughs> you just wish you didn't. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I haven't seen a lot of classic Who, but I, I know what that... I. Jam Jar, who is the, the pretty much the fan voice for the Doctor, uh, has educated me a lot about Classic Who, so I know who Edric is and everything. <laughs> As they say, uh, Star Trek has stolen two things from Doctor Who. The Borg are effectively the Cybermen, and Wesley is just Edric. 
Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> that is the gist of it. Uh, no, yeah, I was gonna say I agree with what you said about like if, if you really go like okay, what's what are there any bad episodes of LMP? I can't like there are ones I don't enjoy watching very much, but they still have stuff I love. Like I think of Meredwell, yeah. which you know the infamous, you know, like oh well that's uh, yeah. Yeah. But then there's, like, the, the only one I can, other, else I can think of is um, Dragon Quest, which even if I don't like it, has a couple lines in it that always make me die laughing. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, Sleepy Pony Ponies. Hmm? <laughs> crackle. See, I don't love Crackle. I don't love Crackle. I'm sorry. I don't love Crackle. Crackle is awesome. Oh. No, um... No, I was going to say, yeah, Sleepless in Ponyville, I think my biggest reason for liking it is that Rarity, every line she has in that episode is... <laughs> <laughs> because she basically sums up my feelings on camping. And oh, she, yeah. She's the equivalent, you know, if Rarity was a person, she would bring laptops while camping. She would bring a laptop. She'd only camp with an RV with her laptop and Wi-Fi. But it's good because Sweetie Belle's so excited that they're camping together. I know, that's why, that's why, it's so funny, I always identify so much with Rarity, I'm always just like, and I have a little sister. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, yeah, Sleeve of Ponyville is a freaking hilarious episode. Yeah. Oh, uh, that is good. And, okay, yeah, so what, talk about one thing you absolutely love and why everyone should experience it, so. Well, uh, if you didn't bring up El Shive, I was going to feel like I was forced to talk about El Shive, so since we've already talked about that, I'll, uh, I, ha- I have a backup prepared. Uh, I, I had a backup in case you didn't talk about it. I was like, okay, I hope he doesn't talk about it. I, 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 was, I was hoping. I could go after you. Both of you guys hadn't gotten to think about sure if you're going to get two of my own to myself, but apparently not. So do your backup. <laughs> All right. So uh, my, my backup is let me tell you about an old cartoon that used to come on called Clone High. Um, (laughs) Okay, so Clone High is a show that came out in the late, I want to say, like, early 2000s. It was on M... 2000. uh, And it's one of the few good things that was ever on MTV. Uh, Actually, I would say one of the two good... One of the three good things ever on MTV, Daria and Celebrity Deathmatch being the first two. Okay, I uh, love all... I can totally agree with this. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. I just, yeah. got Daria, I just got the complete series of Daria on DVD. I'm all happy. Good times. I know, I, I already I already own that, which Daria is actually... The, that's another thing I could talk about, but I, I'm committed to Clone High because more more people know about Daria than they do about Clone High. Yes, everyone so, needs to know about Clone High. <laughs> Preach it. So, so, so Clone High, let me just explain what the premise is. Uh, basically, the idea is that a group from the government, literally called the Board of Shadowy Figures, commissioned clones of famous historical figures to be made by a insane doctor called Dr. Scudsworth, who is completely mentally unstable. Uh, and they sort of portray cloning in a somewhat realistic way in that they age like normal people. So now, at the point where the series takes place, all the clones are about teenager age, so obviously they have to go to high school. So there's basically like a planned community just for the clones, and all the clones have adopted parents. Um, and just seeing how they interact with each other. The funniest part about the series is how the clones act differently from how the originals were supposed to act, because the main character is Abe Lincoln, and he's just a giant nerd who isn't a good leader at all. His best friend is Joan of... His best friend is Joan of Arc, who is actually a angst-ridden goth girl. Uh, yeah. Uh, who is and then there's Gandhi. A, and then there's Gandhi, who is a non-stop party animal. Huh. So you see stuff like that all the time. And, and there's JFK, who is, a, who is a jock, which is, well, that's closer to his real yeah. personality than Nothing the other one. Nothing bad ever happens to the Kennedys. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I know that's the that's the funniest joke on the whole show. I need I need to no need no to, we, the Jesus the Jesus joke was the best. Careful with that nail gun, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> that's the Jesus. Oh wow. <laughs> oh. Yeah, they, they go. So wow. 
And, oh, oh, and, and the Libby character is Cleopatra, who is basically just concerned about her image and being popular. And of course, Abe is in love with her, even though Joan of Arc makes it completely obvious that she's in love with him, but Abe is oblivious to it. So it works on that level where it's they're acting different from historical figures. And the other level that it works on is that every episode is a parody of something that you see in, like, these generic teen dramas <laughs> that... Uh, very exactly. Special. They say very, every very episode special. they say is is a very special episode. And it's parodying something like that. Uh, I think at the time it was probably a direct parody of Dawson's Creek and those type of shows. But since the, since with the channel Teen Nick being created, like those kind of shows are still around. So it just seems like it gets more true and funnier as time goes on, which is kind of rare. Uh, mm-hmm. So every episode parodies stuff like that, and it's just hilarious seeing these historical figures these cloned historical figures dealing with it, and the writing is hilarious. There, there is, I, unfortunately it only lasted one season and it was only 13 episodes, but the thing is, I don't think there was a single episode that I would consider bad in it. Hmm. Uh, every, uh, every episode is hilarious, and it's, I, I think a lot of the writers eventually wrote on Scrubs, but I would say that this series is a lot funnier than Scrubs. Scrubs, at least in my personal opinion. I will uh, say a lot of people would find it. Uh, you'd recognize there's a meme that came from this show, which is, say what? Say what? Really? Yeah, exactly. That's where that came from. <laughs> say what? <laughs> <laughs> I love that meme. <laughs> but uh, every episode is hilarious. It's it's kind of hard to track down now. Last time I checked, it isn't on Netflix. Uh, the at one time, the DVD was kind of hard to find. I actually was able to get it. Uh, I'm not sure if you can still get it on Amazon, but I'm actually checking that right now because if it's on that. there, I'm. <laughs> but if it is on there, I'm. It is on there, and it says there are three left in stock. But you should go <laughs> buy that now. Yeah, by the time anybody uh, hears this, they're probably going to be gone. <laughs> <laughs> Special bonus award for our and, first uh, three listeners. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes. The the uh, next four things that come up in the search when you search for Clone High are Undergrads, Mission Hill, and Dario, which all... I haven't watched Undergrads, but those other two are good series, too. <laughs> I need to see The Critic. It also mentioned The Critic. I, I want to watch that show. I've heard it's really funny. The, the Critic is really good. I enjoy it. It's There yeah, are episodes say, that are hit or miss, but it's pretty funny. Yeah, I say, um, you mentioned, you know, the part of the fun is just how all the characters, the clones do not fully match the original selves. And what I love is they yeah. bring up a lot of the time, the reason they're different is they're reacting to the historical them. Um, like, right. where the Gandhi cracked under the pressure of trying to be Gandhi, so he just decided not to do it. Hmm. Or um, Joan of Arc had to deal with the fact that, you know, technically her original self sacrificed herself, stuff like that. It was, you know, it's a, or, well, you know, it was a martyr, all these kind of things. It's a really good, uh, it's a really good, ep- ah, episode. really good series. I do love it. Why well, couldn't have gotten more? It I and it ended on a cliffhanger. That's the messed up part. Was Greg Wiseman involved or something? Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you know, no, I mean, no. We, we lost this one uh, high school show, but we are getting Equestria Girls. Is that seriously a thing that's happening? Uh, I haven't even looked up. That is, that is a thing that's yeah. happening. I'm still saying I don't know. You know, it could be. Yeah. Well, it, it is just a okay. miniseries. It's not replacing the show or anything, you know. Oh, yeah. Okay, I just want to bring this up. So, uh, so right after the episode was over, we had a big... <laughs> we, had, yeah. we had this whole uh, conversation about random stuff for a while. And one of them was, I was telling him, I, I really like high school. If you haven't watched, if you've watched the show for all, you notice. I really like high school AU's fix. I think that in the right hands, they are really good. And I've never seen a satisfactory one done of ponies. And so we're talking about it, and he sent me this list of ideas. And I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> this would be a good show. And, yeah, no, uh, basically what I liked was he did it where the main six aren't the main character, and aren't students, they're the teachers. Oh. You know, uh, Twilight is the library. I, ooh. I completely forgot I did that. <laughs> like, distant, um, 
what was it? Who 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 who's only hit her assistant? So because he, he, that means he gets out of PE with Rainbow Dash. <laughs> who's the PE? Oh, <laughs> Dash, totally a PE teacher. Uh, of course. <laughs> Let, let me well, let me wait. go into Gmail and see if I can find that because I'll literally just read that on the air once we're done with all this. Okay. <laughs> right, yeah, I'll, I'll hold off on there. But I'd say the only way I describe you had Discord as like a, uh, you know, another student who's a prankster. I thought Discord would be cool as like an administrator who comes in to stir everything up. Oh. Like that, just that'd be. I think it's better than just prankster. Okay, that right. If you okay, this is just a, uh, another random off-topic awesome thing. Oh, have you any of you guys heard of Gotham High? You've no. about oh, that. Oh, yeah, I so. oh, I heard about that. I did. Gotham High. Why? Like, <laughs> um, part of me goes, why would you ever think that up? And the rest of me goes, <laughs> that could have been really cool, though. <laughs> it would have been. It would have been so awesome. So, the li- some listeners are like, what the fuck is Gotham High? Gotham High was some idea they had a while back. What was it, like 2009 or so was when they started working on it. We have a bunch of promotional images, and that's pretty much all that ever came out of it. Would have been a show where Bruce Wayne is a high schooler, and all of his villains go to high school with him. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> it was... And the, and the, it was so funny, like... It's so because, like, uh, Scarecrow looks like the kind of recluse loner kid, but he still has a, a noose for a necktie. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> What is that even? Uh, yeah, it, it looked it looked like it could have been freaking hilarious. Like there was uh, one of the promotional images that apparently it's the kind of plot where they're you know, they're trying to become uh, the president of the student body, kind of voting you know argument thing. And the debate it's Harvey Dent versus Poison Ivy. <laughs> Just laughing. <at> it. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> that's so stupid, but so awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Clone High. You reminded me of something that will never exist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So, you said that. So, what about... Uh, you did mention we talked about Laird Daria. Because I believe our friend here has all, is also a friend of Daria. So, we have, like, three Daria-ites. A lot. Da- yeah, Daria is, a, is an amazing series. I, I love it. My wife really loves it. And it, it has that same quality where you get really invested in the characters. The... the Main fo- focus of the series is the relationship between Daria and her best friend Jane, and them snarking at basically high school in general. Uh, but around the last couple seasons, there's actually a lot of continuity that goes on, and it kind of becomes a coming of age story. Uh, out of the whole series, there are what I would what is commonly considered to be two bad episodes, which both are like completely bizarre. One has magic realism in it, and then none of the rest of the series does, and it's just like, what the oh, hell is, is this? That the, the holiday thing episode? Oh, yes. Yeah, the, the holiday episode that w- didn't happen. Uh, <laughs> and and then there's a musical episode, which I actually enjoy, but everyone else doesn't. Uh, I, yeah, I, so I really only think... But, uh, hmm. The interaction between those two characters, especially the stuff that they go through in the last couple seasons, that that makes that whole series. It's a re- it's a very realistically done high school friendship, and the other characters are very done too. Daria's relationship with her sister is really good oh, as yeah. well, just because they're they're like complete opposites. But then as time goes on, they have more in common than you would think they do. I I do so the episodes I'd recommend the most. The ending to season one is one of is one of the best episodes. That one is just uh, if you don't remember, that's the one where I the guy dies and everyone reacts yeah. to it. That, that one is, that is awesome. That is really well done. And then uh, Jake of Hearts is maybe my favorite episode. Which one is that? That's the one. Um, Daria's dad Jake has a heart attack. And everyone, it's her, his, her family reacting to it, and her herself reacting to her father's mortality, and realizing that he could actually die. And the entire time throughout the episode, at her school, there's this radio talk show group operating out of a van who are like doing the you know, like <laughs> promotional thing. I remember thing. now. And they're just so. 
And then she gives them the comeuppance at the end of the episode by just completely destroying their program <laughs> in the simplest way possible. It was awesome. I love that one. That is a really good one. I just when when you mentioned the the radio part, I remembered why that episode is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, since we're since you mentioned old shows that got canceled and shouldn't have, has anyone else here seen like Megas XLR? I have not actually seen it. Megas XLR was awesome. I grew up on that show. I've heard a lot about it, but yeah, I've never gotten a chance to actually. Well, apparently, Valve's doing something with that. Really? It's like Valve, Valve Twitter. Like Valve Twitter is like, the... yes, the game company. They're like, hey, we just got some new rights. Uh, can everyone say chicks dig giant robots? And then they had a re. <laughs> then someone asked about it. They're like, and yes, we are talking about Megas XLR. <laughs> Uh, so, so they're going to have a really awesome game in like 10 years? Yeah. <laughs> if hey man, by 10 years you mean 15 years, then yes. <laughs> uh, no, don't, don't be, oh, don't hey, don't be sure they'll get it done after episode 3. No, yeah, oh yeah, see we might, get a, yeah. we might get two great games and then just no third one after a horrible cliffhanger. I, I, I'm sure that they could t- change the series into a delightful array of hats. <laughs> The giant robots will all have hats. <laughs> yeah. I, I have a friend who said that Valve is a great company who can do anything except count to three. <laughs> because letter three, they just seem to just have trouble with. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you no, know, dude, they made Portal 2. I, after they made Portal 2, I just stopped bagging on them. Yeah. Oh, I have nothing but love for him, but yeah. <laughs> they still need to be made fun of. Fortress 3. Or Left 4 Dead 3. I swear they're just going to make one game, and it's going to cross them all over. And they just oh call it 3. 3. <laughs> I'm okay with this. I'd buy that. Yeah. Or it be like the orange w- box. Oh, yeah, there you go. I would be into that. <laughs> the 3 box. <laughs> well, they've already got a, kind of got a crossover going between Portal and uh, and Half-Life. They really kind of hinted that Aperture was going to you know tie into Episode 3. So True. if they can just throw in zombies, they're already there. I tie in episode three, but uh, apparently with Portal Two, they've actually said Portal is never going to directly interact with Half Life in, in the Portal series, at least. That's why the second game they explicitly said Portal Two takes place about ten thousand years in the future. Oh, right. I have realized that they had confirmed it, that it takes place so far in the future, specifically because that way there's no possibility of Half Life getting into it. They just want it. They enjoy that they're in the same universe, but they also want them to be two different series with their own things. Yeah, so, understandable. Yeah. So, oh, um, Corey, actually, you brought me this. There's a great Daria fic I read recently that you should definitely really? read. Everyone who likes Daria should read this. It's called uh, Daria's Christmas Carol. And yeah, it's, it's a Christmas Carol from having Daria, but it's done really well because it, point, it, isn't, it doesn't play off the usual stuff. As the author says, uh, the, the original Christmas Carol isn't about greed. It's about changing, uh, finding your flaws and trying to better yourself. And greed is not the only flaw you can have. Daria's is something completely different, but it still needs to be worked on. And obviously, you know, it's Daria, so it's cynicism. <laughs> yeah, spoiler. She's the most cynic character of all time. <laughs> she doesn't, she cracks, like, I think there needs to be like a counter. How many times she smiles throughout the entire series, not counting the opening theme. <laughs> She does not smile at all. She smiles like three or four times. Okay. <laughs> so but it's 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 rare. It's 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 it saying it's rare is like saying oh yeah a rap uh, no a Moltres is rare. Yeah, you mean there's one of them in the game? <laughs> okay. It's more like legendary. So I think does anyone else else have anything they want to talk about? Uh, I just want to uh, say one thing real quick, if I can, uh... Talk. We'll drag it, don't worry. Oh, yeah. Uh, you got, we were talking about web comics earlier. Do you guys know, uh, real-life comics? No. Okay, well, I'm, I'm not going to go too much into the actual comic, but that was the first web comic that I was introduced to way back when. Um, and it kind of got me into reading web comics, and now that there's a bunch of them that I read. And, uh, I was planning to say this to save it up to embarrass Corey, but, uh, he's my Greg Dean. I, he was the, uh, 
the vinyl scratch tapes were the first uh, pony fanfic that I read. Like I, ju- I was just getting into the fandom and really? I checked out a yeah, I checked out Equestria Daily uh, and just updated the the tapes and I'm like, hey, that sounds really interesting, and read it and loved it, and that kind of got me like to write some of my own stuff. So yeah. thank you, you are awesome. Wow, thanks. I, I've been I've been reading to read your stuff because I've heard nothing but good things. The the guy who voices Blue Blood in in our group, who is a guy named Din, who I'm actually working on a, another project with, um, uh, he he has recommended News Pony. What's it called? Is what it was called. Yeah, News. Huh. Uh, he he has actually recommended your your fic as well as uh, uh, the best night ever. Yeah. Uh, best night ever is is great. If you read that instead of mine, I'm totally okay with it. <laughs> I still need to get around to reading the Platinum Crown. No, me neither. Oh, yeah. There's so much I haven't just been able to sit down and start yet. And I need to read that one with the airship that you love so much. Uh, Flight of the Alicorn? Yes. Mm. I think that's what Sam was like, when you were told about this, you were just like, what must read? Yeah. It's like there's a, there's a airship race. And, and it's rarity and blue blood, and it's like some epic adventure. Yeah, I do need to read that, because I was all excited, and then it went into my to-read folder, <laughs> where nothing where ever returns. <laughs> it's it's I have a, go to die. <laughs> I actually, there's actually something, a, a corollary to last episode, something I com- that needs to be mentioned. Last, the last episode I mentioned, uh, Enzyme Sue Must Die, which is a really great webcomic. Uh, which implies it takes place in the new Star Trek movie universe in this really funny chibi style, mm-hmm. where Enzyme Stu, sh- Enzyme Stu shows up on the on the Enterprise, and they need to find a way to get rid of her because she's the most annoying being ever, <laughs> and yet she can bend reality with her suiness. <laughs> and the thing I, I talked about that last week, and I found out, I was like, yeah, it's done, so you know you can read it. There's a sequel going on that involves the Doctor showing up. So, that, so they can find all the Mary Sues throughout the entire multiverse <laughs> and solve the problem forever uh, with the help of Sherlock. <laughs> from the Sherlock series. Oh, wow. Well, <laughs> well, 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 and they're currently in the Marvel Universe. Oh, boy. And they go are, to the next are, generation. You, wait a minute. No, they can't turn Squirrel Girl. Squirrel Girl is in the background. Okay. <laughs> I literally think Squ- Squirrel Girl's walking Did around. She has a, a paper that says it's a Daily Bugle. It says... Uh, uh, still a menace with a picture of Spider-Man on it. <laughs> do, the, do the Mary Sues piss off the X-Men? If so, I will read it right now. <laughs> Actually, no, this, this is what's funny. They're telling, they uh, talk like, so looking, listen, we're looking for a humanoid female with multicolored hair, an abundance of inconsistent powers, a ridiculously tragic past, and an inappropriate fashion sense, and a habit of not staying dead. <laughs> and they go, that sounds like half the X-Men. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, they're there's a magnificent uh, Marvel comic called Next Wave written by Warren Ellis, which is basically like a parody of Marvel stuff in general. And there's a great joke in it where it's the, where he, it, one of the characters says, the X-Men come back more than Jesus. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> uh, the, I think we have X-Men the joke, the laughing stock of the Marvel Universe. You know, if I can go off on a tangent, I've never thought that the X-Men should be part of the big Marvel Universe because they don't make any damn sense. They're just yeah. superheroes. Like, their origin is that they're mutants, but Spider-Man's a mutant. The Hulk's a mutant. Captain America's a freaking mutant. Why does it matter that they're born with the abilities rather than getting them through some some freak accident? There's no real difference. Because homosexual allegory. Yeah, well, it's 2000. Actually, yeah. Oh, but it's- 13. Doesn't work anymore. <laughs> kind of lost track. <laughs> what year is it? Where's my calculator? Uh, it's actually, Where's the advocate? <laughs> it's kind of why I'm happy that Marvel's not getting the rights back to the X-Men movies anytime soon, because I think the universes work better when they're separate, but that's my own thing, and everybody always tells me I'm weird, so... No, I agree with that. I'm not a, I'm not a huge Marvel guy, but that does make a lot of sense. Yeah, um, it, I... I I, w- I will concede that the X-Men are pretty inconsistent with the rest of the Marvel Universe, but the ironic thing is I, I never really cared about the Mex- X-Men, and then I started reading the current X-Men comics that are being released. Like, there's one really good one called Ar- All-Star X-Men, where basically the plot is the X-Men from when the g- comic first started are brought into the future to deal with X-Men, like, where the continuity is at now, and it's actually really fascinating. Hmm. And pretty that's a pretty creative premise and I started getting into it and 
I started reading Exiles. Exiles is really good, too. It's basically X-Men meets Sliders. Yeah, I've heard of that. Good yeah, Exiles I want to read. Next Wave I definitely want to read. Uh, both of those have been recommended by Linkara multiple times, so I have to read them. Mm. Um, and the other one was... That's how yeah. I... Yay! <laughs> uh, Linkara! He is a man! Punch! Punch. Where's a pretty hat? Alright. Pav just say that. <laughs> I, I <laughs> his like, avatar is so perfect for this. I, I am just sitting here silently judging you all. <laughs> I do it. <laughs> I say X Men jokes. Uh, Pat Oswald had a great one like that where he was um, he was doing a joke of you know, Jesus's superpowers. Like they're so weird and random, and he like he's trying to apply for the X Men I'm for the Avengers, <laughs> and he's like, oh wow, you could turn a little food into a lot of food. Hmm. Yeah, sorry, um, but you can go try out for the, oh no, the, they try out for the X-Men, and then it's like, oh, no, no, hey, but go try out for the Avengers, they'll take anyone. Bad <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but true. <laughs> they have a guy who shoots arrows really good. <laughs> I'm very big super. It's that guy. See, see, yeah, so, Hey, 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 Green Arrow is awesome regardless of his arrow shooting. And he shoots arrows with boxing gloves at the end as well. Ooh, this so, is true. <laughs> well, Hawkeye's ongoing comic is amazing. Uh, I don't oh. know if anyone's reading it, but yeah, oh. it's really freaking good. Uh, and he, it actually has made me like the character. I never disliked him. I just never cared. But Matt Fraction is awesome, and that is my recommendation. Go read that. Your recommendation of the day. Yes. The, the, the Avengers movie made me care a little bit more about Hawkeye. The, the Marvel Cinematic that. Universe in general seems to be making me care more about them in general. Mm. Definitely. I care uh, I care about Thor now just because how, of how awesome <laughs> the Avengers are. <laughs> ah, the Odin's son, Dolph, appreciate thine support. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, a lot of people don't like the Thor movie. I thought it was really good. I really liked it, especially someone pointed out the way they showed Asgard. Mm. Uh, all the scenes of that proved that they could totally do a new Gods movie. <laughs> which I said, yes, 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 please, yes. I want to see Dark Side on the big screen so he can sit on someone's couch. Yep. <laughs> I was going to make that joke if you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you beat me to it last time. Yep. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know, they could make a Final Crisis movie, but it would just be a disjointed mess of clips. <laughs> they could actually, I still think they, uh, with the animated movies they've been doing recently, they should totally do a Blackest Night movie. It would be awesome. Oh, yeah. That would be awesome, actually. I, I, I don't care for Green Lantern that much, but that would be awesome. That is, uh, I'm not a huge bit Green Lantern fan. I like some of the comics, but yeah, The Blackest Night is my favorite event comic probably ever. It's what, basically, reading that got me more into comics just because I read and go, who are all these characters? I must find out. Who are these dead people coming back to life? They haven't done a Sinestro Corps War movie yet. Yeah, they have. Haven't they? No, they haven't. Uh, the, they should. There's been two... There's been two Green Lantern uh, anime movies. There's First Flight, which is okay, yeah. and there's Emerald uh, Emerald Knights, I believe, yeah. which was the first one that had Nathan Fillion as Hal Jordan, which was the best casting of all time. Oh, yeah. Kept for just a yeah. But it was weird because he is barely in the movie. There's like a kind of main plot, but it only serves so each character can tell a story, uh, some kind of story, so you get to hear all these different awesome Green Lantern stories, including, oh, God, what's his name? What's the planet? Oh, um... Mo Mogo. Mogo? Ego. Mogo. 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 Yes. <laughs> uh, huh. Sam, he's a planet what? that's a green lantern. Huh? He's a lantern. <laughs> <laughs> and instead is... of a ring, he has a giant forest in the shape of a ring around its equator. Huh. That, the that is 100% all... true. I've Because I've read Sinestro Core Wars. That is 100% true. <laughs> Bogo is uh, is the most powerful Green Lantern of all. Uh, you can't use him in most fights, though, because he's a freaking planet. Getting him near someone else's orbit is just going to fuck everything up. So didn't the Sinestro Corps, like, recruit their own planet to fight him? Uh, they have a city. Ah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Which was a Sinestro Corps member. Uh, uh, that was a good comic, uh, good event, too. It was pretty good. Um... I think it had a little bit too much Superboy, Superboy Prime for my taste, but... Too, you know. <laughs> yeah, it is too much. Yeah. Okay, Less is more. Uh, 
which is to say Let's, no, but it's more for him. Sweater <laughs> yeah. writers, say no to Superboy Prime. Amen. <laughs> Don't use peer pressure. I kind of freaked out when they saw, when they showed a uh, anti monitor though, like the big splash page reveal. I was like, holy that crap! The, freaking anti monitor. He that is pretty intimidating, especially if you read Crisis on Infinite Earths. Oh yeah. <laughs> Like, well, uh, you have something you'd like to talk about. You've been all silent. Mr. Judgy? I like ponies. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yay, ponies! <laughs> <laughs> the judge takes his gavel. Mr. Wright, I find your client guilty! <laughs> <laughs> Wait, does that make me Phoenix? No. I don't want to be Phoenix. Nope. No, dude, I wouldn't want to be Phoenix. Just like as hell. Yeah. Seriously. Can I be Harvey yeah, Birdman? I, okay, Sam, I think I've told you about this. I need to find it for the Wii There's a Harvey Birdman video game. Yeah. yeah. That it's built like Ace Attorney. There is. Must play. I haven't played it, but it exists. I want to play it. I love Harvey Birdman. I do, too. That hilarious. Indeed. Harvey <laughs> Birdman is awesome. Me, I don't know how this relates. Oh, well, the both adults from my guess. Uh, I have a friend that one day we're going to go to a convention in butterfly suits, and he's going to be 21 and I'll be 24. That is awesome. I think, wait, 24 is the fat one, right? I'd be 24. That's, that'd be, he's the skinny one, I'm the fat one. We'll be the two butterfly. We'll be the two henchmen. I think, the yeah, best. 24 is the bigger one. 21 is the one that, yeah, poor guy. Yeah. Dive. Yeah. Spoilers. <laughs> Okay. Oh my. <laughs> All right now. We no, have oh, yes. We have five people. Actually, we did talk about Chrono Trigger. We did. And how Chrono didn't exist. Uh oh. Oh, saying, oh, we'll talk look, at, look at the later. time. Oh, we do. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> oh, the game that doesn't exist did have some great music. Can we at least say we, that? Sure it, it had, we can acknowledge this OST what? that Squaresoft put out, you know, completely unrelated to any game. And it had some great music in that. Yeah. Squaresoft at the time? Wouldn't it be Square Enix at the time? No, oh, that was Squaresoft still. Yeah. Oh, really? But, yeah, Final yeah, Fantasy X was Squaresoft. Yeah, I'm going to expose myself for the hypocrite that I am. Chrono Cross is... I, I don't hate it. It is it is a decent game, but it is a terrible sequel to Chrono Trigger, just yeah. in terms of what it does to both the events and the characters from that game. Yes. As its That's own game, heard. it works fine. I, I was never really sold on the battle system for it, but yeah, I mean, it, it really... it did do a lot with some interesting world building and stuff, but then... Like, the connection to Trigger, it it's like, it doesn't even touch uh, the events of Trigger. It, it's like, it almost feels like a completely separate universe. And then you get to the second disc, and it's like, oh, by the way, and oh, by the way, these characters that you liked, and oh, by the way, these events, and oh, by the yeah, uh, so, Yeah, it's just like, what the hell are they doing here? That's, <laughs> that's people yeah, that's know. when Sam they can But they think it's his favorite game ever. Or something. Sam? What? Oh, the trigger. You go. <laughs> <laughs> if you did that a second later, I would have choked. <laughs> I choked to death. On the last podcast. <laughs> I hope you'd be happy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Oh, May I just say in Chrono Cross's defense, and this might be 14-year-old me speaking, but the... The yeah, Australian blonde chick in the miniskirt was a plus for that game. Okay. That, that, yeah. Big ups, yeah. Big ups to that. Is she Luca? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm starting kind of going, did you guys know this? Chrono Trigger is one of Sam's favorite games. Yay. Guy. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's really good, especially the soundtrack. The Chrono Trigger soundtrack is my favorite soundtrack ever. And he owns it in physical copy form. Yep. Very nice. I found it at an anime convention, I'm... and it made me incredibly happy, and I bought it. Nice. That was super jelly. Yeah. I'm jealous. I am, too. 
I, I mean, just Chrono Trigger is like. No, well, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's it. You look even today. You go back there, and it's got a lot of depth to the character, and that that's mm-hmm. with, with you know whether it's ponies or you know Green Lantern. You know what we talk about? We've got all these epi- uh, a series with strong characters, and Chrono Trigger's got strong characters to it. You, you look at some of these. Uh, you know, next gen RPGs, and you don't have that. You have just kind of this forgettable cast of uh, you vanilla are. characters, or <laughs> Chrono Cross. But you know, but um, <laughs> yeah, it, 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 you've really got a lot of depth in there. Uh, Wait, what did you just say? Did you say Eternal Sonata? Oh, I said, I said, I said, Eter- I said Sonata yet. Eternal Sonata. Sonata. Yeah. It's, okay, for a second I thought you said Eternal, I thought you said Tales of Symphonia, and I was like, I haven't finished it yet! <laughs> no, 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 the Tales games are no, pretty the Tales good. Tales games, they're, they're fine. They're fine. Yeah. They're great. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So depressed, uh, I've got, like, 30 hours in on Sil- Symphonia, still, which apparently is not even the end of the first disc, and then I lost my memory card, and I still have the game, and I've got, I have a new memory oh, card, but it always oh, has it, because I'm like, oh. I lost so much time. Oh. That's rough. That's rough. That's rough, buddy. <laughs> Wouldn't worse that on my worst enemy. <laughs> well, uh, maybe, maybe. <laughs> I, hope, I hope you lose your memory card and you're the end of a game. <laughs> I hope oh. that you get to the end game and you're doing all the wrap-up quests and you're just about the final touch and you're going to fight the final boss and then you lose your... Uh, I can think of a couple of people I might wish that on. (laughs) (laughs) What's up with it? There's like a thing that's uh, featured on FIM Fiction that's just called Fluttershy History's Greatest Monster. Like, what? She kicks a puppy or something? (laughs) Yeah, I think she kicks a puppy. (laughs) Oh, yeah, yeah, I've seen that. I haven't read that one yet, but. uh... Yeah, I was like, what? Fluttershy's not the. Well, if it doesn't I, I, French, you might. I'm always yeah. scared to check the feature box because, like a fool, I leave my mature flag on, ah, and then yeah. certain uh, things hit into the feature box, and I read the description, and I lose my faith in humanity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good for you. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're going to get that sometimes. Uh, I, I, I won't go into describing it at all. I won't describe it, but, but, but there, is, there is one recently that is a tricksy and it's got what? it's got a list of like thirteen trigger warnings on it, and I'm just like, no, 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 oh boy, uh, no, no, no. Appropriate <laughs> response there, What? He was trying to run away from your chair. From, 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 like... from the fix. Yeah, no, I dropped my phone. That oh. was unfortunate. <laughs> I was even like, it's up the thick is so bad he fucked. The tape. It flips through the table. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I think we might be done. This has been a good episode. Yeah, it's been fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, been, it's been it's been really fun. You guys are cool. We talked about a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. We really did. We really did. Think we'll have listeners next week because they'll be too busy with all the recommendations. Yeah. <laughs> I have to watch all of Sloan High and Haruhi, and then I have to play this game, Sadrack. Ah! Oh! Then they yeah, have to watch go Sloan High on Amazon to get one of those three Clonod? copies. Did watch Clonod? Wait. Yeah, did someone say Clonod? Huh? Did no? Huh? Did no Clonod? one say Clonod? Okay, well, okay, since it got brought up, everyone else watched Clonod, it will destroy your heart and soul and then put it back together, and it's wonderful. Favorite anime yeah. ever. Okay, anyway. Everyone watch Madoka Magica. It is one of the best subver- uh, deconstruction reconstructions at the same time, and it makes you scared of a cute little animal. Oh, gosh. Freaking contracts. Yes. Yeah. Would you like to sign a contract with me? Yeah. Okay. So, if you guys would like to send us... Any questions or anything, go to the Brony Book Club at yahoo.com or go to our Facebook page, which will be in the description. We're going to be back next week with something or other. I'm not 100% sure of what we're doing next week. So, this has been a lot of fun. I hope to mm-hmm. do something similar for our 30th. That would be great. Do it. Yeah. Do yeah. it. With two more um, people. Yes. <laughs> Hooray. Yeah. 
uh, okay. Thank you guys for listening, and thank you guys for being on, actually. You have been really great. It's been, <laughs> it has been more rambly than usual, but that's the sign of a good group of people. True. Yep. True. Yeah. When you have yeah. five people who have all played Chrono Trigger, <laughs> true friendship. That kind of balances out the whole mature feature box thing with the whole faith in humanity thing. Yeah. <laughs> if five random people can have played Chrono Trigger, there might be hope for us yet. <laughs> and may- maybe, maybe someday I'll actually update that. Maybe. 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 Sam, you have something to say about that? Have. Hi. I need more My Little Chrono. I need it, or I will die. And if you don't give it to me, I will die, and it will be your fault. And none of us want that. It will be murder. Yes, it will be murder. You will have well, murdered I, me. I, I will have blood he, on my He this guy. Yes. He hired this assassin to kill him, and then he got his memory array. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't remember that, but, well... Okay, no, never mind. Don't, don't <laughs> <your reference>. And... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I put I, I wrote the fic and I put it on my memory card. Then my memory card. Just <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Bond, did you get my reference there? Uh, what do I? Wait. Ghost story. Uh, oh, oh, wait. What? Wait. Ghost story. Uh, what? <laughs> Sorry, blinking. <laughs> I think I think that's a no. I, I don't remember any brainwashed assassins. Oh, 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 oh! Okay, the assassin sorry. wasn't brainwashed. Right. Never mind. Carry on. <laughs> Yay. Got it. Everybody should read the Dresden Files. Damn it. <laughs> Most amazing series ever. There is a guy who a wizard rides a Tyrannosaurus Rex and fights zombies with it. <laughs> and that's just like half series. That's minor. Yeah, that's a minor case of all. <laughs> he also, at one point, gives a challenge to the eight, uh, what, eight, or seven strongest wizards in the world that he will personally throw down against them on a creepy island in the middle of nowhere, all as a bluff for a completely different plan. While making Wile E. Coyote references. Yes. Hmm. Super genius. <laughs> All right, okay, I think that's the last ramble. <laughs> Thank you, guys. See you next week. Oh, well. Uh, right, guys, it's fun. Bye. Yep. Bye. See ya. <laughs> Bye. Of course, that never happens. <laughs>